Hi everybody, Barbara from All Brands and welcome back to the All Brands show. And we have a very special guest. It's Juki all the way today. So I want you to look at something that you're wearing that has a stitch on it. Guess what? There's about a 90% chance that that was stitched on a Juki sewing machine in a factory. They are the largest manufacturer of industrial machines in the world. So I think that they know what they're doing. <laughs> and if you are a quilter, oh my gosh, hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining. I see people chiming in already. If you're a quilter, I think that there's so much to offer in the Juki line of machines. And we have a very special guest today, Tim Bond. So without further ado, I will bring him in. Hi, Tim. <laughs> hi, Barbara, how are you today? <laughs> Good. I can't see you. Can you move kids? a little bit to the left? Sorry. That's okay. There he is. There you go. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Hi. Well, you know, I have so oh. much equipment here that I don't know exactly where I want to be so you can see it. So I was trying to make it so that you could see them. But if you want to see me instead to start with, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with here, here with us today. And I'm super excited about the models of the machines that you're going to show. Because if y'all haven't noticed, there's a new logo that maybe some of y'all haven't recognized underneath Tim. It's called Q Juki QVP. What is that? That's our <laughs> quilting virtuoso and professional line of machines. It's an upper line of dealerships, like all brands, where you can go and see the top of the line machines in each of the brackets. So like, for example, here we have our nine inch machine. This is a TL. Barbara, you know this machine, it's been around for years. But very popular is especially machine. Especially made for the QVP product for the QVP dealers. So it's got some nice features in it. We're going to look at one of those today. Then I have the QVP Sayaka machine. That's our top of the line sewing machine. And of course, our long arm machine is also in the QVP product line. We're going to take a look at that also. And I also want to talk about my new, I did another video on this one today. It's so popular, the Juki MO1000 serger. And you can totally quilt on that. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And then the long arm, special, yeah. <laughs> special long arm machine. So yeah. before we get into all of that, let's just say hey to some of the watchers. Um, hi, Kyle. Oh my goodness. Laura Willis, thank you for joining us again. Tim, you got a shout out from Renee Bolton. Hi, Renee. <laughs> <laughs> we have Judy watching from Hawaii and we do ship all over the world. So um, we do have some great machine demonstrations and um, for you today. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you everyone for watching from South Carolina. Oh my gosh. Gwen says she wants Juki to make purses. Yes, they're so versatile, yeah. but we're touching on quilting today. We're gonna we're gonna touch on that purse also for a minute because that's one of the nice features on the on the TL eighteen Haruka. Okay, well so, I'll let you I'll let you talk about that one and I'll go backstage so you can have the floor. Okay, great. Now today when we talk about sewing machines, machines that's kind of a, a bad word with me because machines are like work. Work is a four letter word, and I like to have a fun time when I'm playing with my toys. So you want to make sure that you're making your sewing fun and enjoyable. And if it's like work, well, maybe it's not you or the project. Maybe it's the machine. So that's why we're going to talk about some of the technology pieces in our machines to make that work go away and make it fun. So first off, let's start with some ground rules. I'm going to sit. I'm going to talk. You're going to watch and shoot questions and send us some love and everything. And we're going to make you get up and move around because we're going to play musical chairs at some point because we need to get up and move at some point. We can't sit here all day long. So keep that in mind. So when the music starts, when I get Barbara to cue the music, you're going to want to get to walk around your chair at least once because that gives me a chance to move my cameras around so you can get a better view. And it gives us some exercise. That also adds yeah. a layer of interest to our, to our presentation today. Yeah, Barbara? So it's going gonna, it's gonna to look a little something like this. 
Ooh, I'm tired. I need to take that break. <laughs> That's because you did all that surging today. So let's go ahead and get started on our Haruka machine. Now this is a TL18 QVP. It's a straight stitch only machine, 1500 stitches. Now I'm going to confess a couple of things to you. One, I'm a speed demon. So that 1500 stitches is great for me. And two, I'm kind of lazy. Anything the machine can do for me, I'm more than happy to let it do it for me. So I have a nice throat space. I have high space. I have 1500 stitches. I have an easy dial to use, needle up, needle down, and thread cut. But I do have a rather unique feature on, that's exclusive on our TL18. And you know what? That's what we're gonna look at today. Cause this will help quilters. It'll help garment sewers. It'll help crafters with those bags and give you a little hint on how to handle bulky or thick items. Hey Barb, cue the music. Let's do a little a musical chairs. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. right. Woo, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Show us up the Tim. All right. So you've got a close up view of the foot on my TL machine. Now, normally when you put the foot down, it sits all the way down the plate, right? So you're trying to get your fabric underneath it. And a normal thickness of fabric is not a problem. But let's say that you're working on a lapel that's got padding in it, or you're working on a strap for a bag or a purse. And you've got this thickness in there now. Well, if I just lower the foot on it, it's trying to squish all that fabric into that minimal space that we have originally. Well, that's going to create a little bit of a problem and people wonder why they get wrinkles in their fabric. And the first thing they want to do is come up to the top and loosen up their presser foot pressure. But changing your presser foot pressure changes the way the fabric is going to feed through it. What we really want to do is we want to have the machine allow for that thickness. That's where our micro lift comes in very handy on our machine. Now I'm going to take my fabric out of here and I'm going to put my foot down so that you can see it sitting flat on the needle plate. And I'm going to come up to the top of the machine, which I'm going to show you this knob in a minute, but I'm going to turn my knob and you're going to see that foot is suddenly going to start to lift off. Oh, there it goes. It's lifting up, it's lifting up, it's lifting up. I'm going to push down in the front so you can see it's clear of the needle plate. So now I've created myself a little bit of a gap to accommodate some of that thickness from my fabric. So now when I want to put this under there and I put it back down to sew, it's not going to squish so hard because I've given it just a skosh of room to accommodate that thickness. So now when it sews, I'm not going to get that push on the top layer of fabric and it's going to feed evenly through the machine. So you're, you're wondering, well, that's not that big of a deal. But it is a big deal for people that are doing bags, where you're doing lapels, things where you have to have that precise movement of the fabric. You don't want those wrinkles to come all the way up the strap or all the way up the corner of the lapel. So this is why we like our micro lift. Now our micro lift does have a mount of adjustment that you can adjust by increments on the dial. I'm going to show you the dial in just a second. But I really, really want to also show you is the fact that people think that you need to use all of that, and that's only a portion of it. I'm going to crank this all the way up so you can see how much gap I can actually create. Well, what does that mean? That means I can put a pretty thick package of fabric, batting, interfacing, whatever I'm working on underneath there and still maintain proper pressure and get my feed ducts to move my fabric cleanly and conveniently. Well, that's kind of cool for a, for a kind of industrial machine. So I can put this under here. I can lower it down. Now for this sandwich, that's a bit high. So I would come back up to the top and I would crank that down just a bit so that it's going to move cleanly. Remember, I still need pressure on my fabric to have it move through the machine. You know what? Let's take a look at that knob at the top so you can understand what I'm talking about. So bear with me. We're going to go for a little bit of a bumpy ride here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cue the music. Sorry. All right. There we go. So here's my micro lift knob. Now you can see it's got little black lines on it. So if I do not have it engaged, it just parks down out of the way. So now I'm regular sewing on my TL, but I'm going to be doing that bulky item and I need to adjust my micro lift. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to crank it up and I have three lines and a red zone. 
And each one of those lines represents an increment to allow me to gauge how thick of a space, I mean, how thick of a fabric, how much of a space I want to provide. So that's a really cool feature where technology actually helps us do things that we may have been struggling to do in the past. What does everybody think of that? Well, let's set this back to normal. Because you know, if I don't set it back to normal, I'll forget about it the next time I sit down to sew on my machine and I'll just have a fit with myself. Yeah. And everybody, I forgot to mention, we're going to be doing a giveaway of a gift certificate for all brands at the end of this video. So um, I did forget to say that in the beginning. Um, if, and if you're interested um, in learning more, um, I got some thread in my eye, uh, <laughs> Tim, about this amazing machine type Haruka into the comments if you're on Facebook, but if you're on YouTube or um, or on our website, email marketing at allbrands.com for a special message on that machine. Yeah. Jeez, okay. That's great. Okay, Barb, you know what? It's time for musical chairs. All right, here we go. All right, you ready? Oh, not, yet. not quite. All out. <laughs> So thank you guys for uh, typing in for that special message. So this machine, and let me tell you, can I but can I um, interject uh, for a moment? By I all have, means. Uh, the Kyrie, and you have the Sayaka, and you'll notice that these are all Japanese names of these machines, which I think is just brilliant because it's a testament to the Japanese engineering that goes into these machines. And I am so impressed with the stitch quality of this machine. Um, I think that a lot of you are maybe familiar with a straight stitch and it may look somewhat like a zigzag, right, Tim? So, yes, they sometimes have a little slant to them. Yeah, so this one, I didn't sew it actually straight, but you can see that the stitch quality, you have that, wonderful straight stitch, which everyone wants for quilting um, on this machine. And I know mine has, um, mine's the non-QVP version and yours is the QVP model. So yours is a little su more souped up than mine with features, but um, mine, I, I switched out to from the zigzag needle plate to the straight stitch needle plate. And it even comes with a separate set of feed dogs I hope I'm not uh, stealing your thunder, but I was like, wow. So you change the feed dogs and it even better, um, gives you a better stitch quality. So I'm so impressed with this machine. So well, take good, it away. Barbara. You, know, Barbara, <laughs> you talk about the feed dogs and when you switch out the feed dogs on the Kire and the Sayaka, you're actually making the feeding system match our TL machine. Did you notice that when you were handling the feed dogs and moving them? And if anyone has ever sewn on a TL 2010 or a TL 98Q, give me a hand raise. That is an amazing machine, which the um, one that you just uh, mentioned is the uh, QVP version of uh, with that additional feature that you showed. So, oh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. okay. So Barbara, I'm gonna talk about the Sayaka. And this is a machine I really enjoy sewing on. It's not quite as fast as my TL, but it still satisfies my need for speed. 
but it really satisfies that laziness in me because everything on the machine virtually can be automated. So if I'm not feeling like I want to do work because I really want to enjoy myself on the machine and have some playtime, that's when I'm going to go in and turn on the automated features. So I can make it run a little bit more manual, but why? Let's have some fun with it. So let's talk about some of the automated features on the machine itself. So I'm going to start with the screen so that you can see the screen clearly on the side here. Then one thing I want you to notice is our stitch patterns are all laid out here. And if I want to, I can explode the window so I can see a larger selection. And when I select one, it's going to set the machine for me. It doesn't just pick stitch width and stitch length. It's going to pick stitch width, stitch length, thread tension, because your thread tension needs to change as you change from one stitch pattern to another. So the nice thing is I can select the stitch patterns here and the machine does the rest of it for me. For those of you that are sewers, the 01 stitch pattern is our first and straight stitch center needle. So I'm going to show you the straight stitch center needle here. But remember, I'm lazy and I need to be able to secure the beginning and ending of the seam so I have the availability of turning on a lock stitch or a locking stitch at the beginning and at the end. Oh, wait a minute, I'm still lazy. I want to have it cut the thread at the end and I want to have it lift the presser foot at the end. So now I've made that entire seam process automatic. I don't need to worry about pressing the reverse at the beginning to get the lock stitch. I only need to worry about tapping it at the end so that it will lock stitch at the end, cut the thread and lift the foot off, allowing me to continue to my next piece. Talk about being lazy. This machine helps me be lazy. But let's talk about some nice features that might help specialty people, such as some of our quilters, and some options for them. So number three. Yeah, so hey, Tim. Yes. Can we just do a quick zoom in on that screen just so that everybody can take a look at the um, interface on that? Sure. Let me move the camera over. It's going to get bumpy okay. for just a minute. All right. So everybody. Do some musical chairs because this screen is just phenomenal. Okay, so yes, and yeah, hey, I'm gonna make you full screen and then I'm gonna zoom in on my curie so that they can see the difference in the soul place. I'll be right back. Okay, so. Stitch pattern one. Stitch pattern number three is for our quilters. Now, remember, I'm lazy, so anything the machine does for me, I'm more than happy to let it do. And I can select number three as my quarter inch stitch, and guess what? I don't need to change my foot. I can do a quarter inch seam with my regular A foot. But you know, there are people who need a little extra help because my A foot is my regular general sewing foot. It doesn't have a guide. And some people are a bit more comfortable with the center needle. So they would, of course, go back to the one stitch, but they have options for some other feet. So we offer you, comes with the machine, a quarter inch regular foot. Now the quarter inch foot has a notch where the needle falls, a notch a quarter inch in front, and a notch quarter inch behind to help you start and stop a quarter inch from the edge of your fabric. But some people need a little extra guide. Maybe you're a beginner and you're not quite comfortable with it, or maybe you're just getting comfortable with the machine. So we have a quarter inch foot that has an edge guide to help you out. We haven't thought of everything, but we thought of a lot of things to help you with this machine, not just in the accessory feet, but also on the machine itself. An easy interface that you can see everything at the touch of a button, and you don't have to worry about scrolling through a menu if you don't want to. We can select our stitch patterns by number. I want stitch pattern 255. I've got 255. 255 says happy in case you can't see it on the screen, and I like to have a happy machine because a happy machine makes a happy sewer. Yeah. And I am a happy sewer with this one. And let me show you, this is the foot kit that comes with the curie. Oh my goodness. So many different feet and it comes with two different stitch plates. So I took off the standard stitch plate that came on it and then I installed the um, straight stitch needle plate. So I had to take off the feed dogs, which was so easy to do for zigzag sewing. And then I, uh, I'll, I'll 
shift my camera and be right back. Okay, so I put my straight stitch needle plate on with my quarter inch quilting foot with guide, Tim. Yes. Oh my goodness, I love it. And look at all these stitches. And it stitches beautifully. You so know that. <laughs> So you know that this is that straight stitch theme dogs that you're, you were showing that you were talking about earlier. But you know something we haven't talked about that really helps us with our sewing is our smart feed system. Yes. And our smart feed system is kind of like having a built-in walking foot. Now we call it smart feed because it's more than just pulling a foot down to have it integrate and operate. It actually has a sensor. So when you pull it down, the machine knows that you've got it activated and it will not let you select a stitch pattern that it will not run with. It also is adjustable. So you can actually do some specialty features with it, such as you can do a little gathering with it. Let's see you do that with some of the other walking type feet that are out there. You know what? That is really cool. <laughs> I'm going to see if we can't get a different camera angle going. So it's time for musical chairs. And we're going to see if we can't show you a little bit better view of that smart feed system. Got it. And while you do that, instead of doing musical chairs, I'm just going to say hey to some people. Oh my gosh. Janet, thanks for watching. Bruce, thanks for watching. Oh my gosh. So, oh, I wanted to give a special thanks to Valerie in the background, who's helping with the camera work and Callie and Morgan, who are also helping answer your questions. So if you have questions, let us know. Um, and also, uh, mine is the Curie. That's uh, the one that I have in my studio. If you're interested in a special message on that one, then uh, if you're on Facebook, message that. The one that's in Tim's studio is the Sayaka. So um, he'll show you the differences between the two, but um, I think that you'll be very happy with the Sayaka. So Tim, you ready? I'm ready anytime. Okay. All right. So we've changed our camera angle here so you can take a view of our smart feed system. Now, this is just a little mechanism that hangs in the back here, and it has feed dogs on the top. And we know it works with a foot that has a slot in the back of it, like I showed you with a quarter inch foot. In fact, let me bring that foot back over here so you can see that it has a slot in the back of it to accommodate those teeth that are going to be on top of your fabric. So how do I engage this? It's very difficult. You grab it, you pull it down, you pull it forward, it's going to lock into position. Now I just heard my machine beep because I'm on happy. Remember that happy pattern that I had selected? It doesn't like this combination. So I'm going to need to release my foot back up so it'll clear itself and I can change my stitch pattern to something else because it's got that nice safety feature. When I pull this down and put it into position, the machine knows whether or not I can actually use this feature with that stitch pattern. I love integrated dual feed. It's better than a walking foot because you don't have to change your foot out. And so many of the feet have the little notch in the back so that you can use it with many different types of feet that come with the machine. Love that. Now there is one other little safety feature, which I'm going to show you real quick. Hopefully I can get it to operate for me. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. It's when you get lazy. Remember, I told you I was lazy, and that's when you try to put the foot up or down and it's not engaged correctly, it doesn't let you. It won't let you make that mistake because your foot is not engaged properly. So that's another nice little safety feature we have in our machine. For those people like me that are lazy, or maybe I've just gotten really comfortable with the machine and I don't really pay as much attention to doing things on it as I used to because I got comfortable with it. You know what? We're going to change our camera view again. So Barbara. okay. while we do that, instead of musical chairs, I'm going to show them how the feet have the notches in the back for the integrated dual feet. So this is like the one that you're probably familiar with on the TL 2010 um, or the um, Haruka, which he showed you in the beginning. So here's another uh, straight stitch foot that's open. Um, let's see. And there was one other one. It's over here. Oh, the um, the one that's on it, which this is great 
the quarter, my favorite foot in the world is a quarter inch quilting foot with guide. So the fabric, there's like a little metal prong here and the fabric just rides along that edge of that. But what's great about that, because this is available for all machines on the Sayaka and Kyrie, it has a notch in the back so you can do integrated dual feed like walking foot with the quarter inch quilting foot. That's an A plus for me. So Barbara, so you know what else is good? What? You can actually use the smart feed system to put your binding on your quilt. It also helps you do top stitching when you're doing top stitching on a jacket or a, or a shirt or a blouse. So you, it actually helps move the fabric along so that you can maintain that even stitch quality and stitch length. So it's a really good, that people don't even think about, it's a good feature to have. Yeah, I love that stitch. It's, the, it's a straight stitch and it's very good quality. Love it. So now, what do you have to show us next? I'm going to show, I'm going to talk about tensions on this machine just for a minute, and then we'll probably jump over to the piece de resistance, our big long arm. But I want to talk about tensions because tensions are one of those things that we often forget about. On our machine, when you select a stitch pattern, remember I told you that it changes your stitch length and your stitch width, and it will adjust the tension for you. Well, it actually does a little bit more than that. So for example, if you look right here on the screen, you'll see that my tensions are 0.0. .0. That is our starting point on both the Kirei and the Sayaka machine for our tensions. When I select my quarter inch piecing stitch, you can see that it's now a negative 1.5. So the machine has made an adjustment based on the change of the stitch length. Well, that's because I selected another pattern, you think. But let me show you something. I'm going to go back over here to my straight stitch. It shows zero, zero. And as I make my straight stitch shorter, oops, you see it's changing the tension as I make an adjustment on the stitch pattern. Now I've got a machine that actually keeps up with me. When I make a change, it's going to make a change as needed. Hence, once again, I don't need to worry about the tensions on it so I can be a little lazy and I can enjoy myself with the machine because I don't have to concentrate on so many changes on the machine. That's pretty cool, isn't it, Barbara? Uh, yeah, I like that. <laughs> I love, I, I really think that Jukies are built tough because they, they're, they're known for the industrial machines. You know, I just love it. You know, the other, the other thing we get, Barbara, is people want to know because it's a computer machine, how much strength is there in it? Mm-hmm. Now, for people that have been sewing on the Kiri for a while, or, or they've been sewing on the Sayaka, they kind of know how much strength is in this machine. But I'm going to tell you that, you know what? The machines are pretty strong, and I would put my Sayaka against, virtually against the strength of my TL in a regular straight stitch sewing match any day. Yeah, and the TLs, I've talked to so many consumers that have the TLs or the Haruka QVP that you showed. Mm -hmm. um, they're using it in costume shops. Oh my gosh, they're sewing leather. It's a professional machine. And yeah. you know, and you know why they like some of these machines? We have a box feed system. Now I'm going to move the camera again because I'm going to talk about the box feed system and where that actually helps you sewing thicker projects. So a real quick lesson here on box feed. So bear with me. Okay. All right. I'm going to put him backstage. And Kathy, yes, if you have that first machine that he showed, let us know which model number you have because they've been producing that model for a long time, but it didn't have that feature that Tim was talking about in the beginning uh, that the QVP Haruka has. So I think that that's really cool, but it's a very well-made machine. So how you doing, Tim? Good, good. We're all set here. I hope you can see this angle. And you can see the throat plate, and you can see I've got my foot lifted off. Oh, you know, I forgot one thing that's really cool with this machine. You can adjust how much clearance you have on this foot. The default is six millimeters, but I can make it eight millimeters up or 10 millimeters up, so I can have as much clearance in there as I want, depending on the project I'm working on. But the nice thing with having extra clearance and having a box feed system 
is that my feed dogs aren't moving when my needle is starting to penetrate into the fabric. And we always want to try and test that on our machines because that way you know exactly how thick of a bundle you can sew on your machine. If you put your needle down and your fabric starts to get penetrated by the tip of the needle and it is still moving, you're going to cause that needle to deflect into the needle plate, causing some damage. But if you put that needle down and the fabric is not moving as the needle penetrates into it, that's going to give you an idea of how thick that sandwich can be. Now, I can tell you on some of my machines, they'll only allow me about an eighth of an inch. But on my jukies, some of my jukies, I can actually get away with a quarter inch of thickness before my needle starts to penetrate and my feed dogs might interfere. But my feed dogs really don't interfere. My feed dogs are dropping straight down. They're not still pulling the fabric into it because that box feed. So it pulls the fabric through, the feed dogs drop straight down, and then it comes to the front. That helps with being able to sew thicker bundles on our machines. So there's your little quick lesson on, on the box feed system, which is available in most of our Juki uh, TL and DX series and NX series machines. Yeah. You know, Barbara, so let's box do something else now. Okay, I'll put you backstage. Y'all, box feed is so cool. If you could, the easiest way to think of it is the feed dogs make a box, but on other uh, brands, Juki has box feed, but on other brands of machines, it's more of like a circular motion. So it's not like grabbing the fabric and pulling it back all at once. So it's a really great feature to have is the box, the box feed. Ooh. Okay. So to recap, the one that we just talked about was the Sayaka. If you want the, um, what's, can you, can you recap the difference between the Curie and the Sayaka machine? What do they lose when they get the Curie? Actually, they're almost identical machines, but you get some extra accessories in the Sayaka that you do not get in the Kire. One of those accessories is an ankle adapter that allows you to expand to use other feet with the machine that, uh, that don't come with it. You know, we have a great assortment of feet that come with the machine, but sometimes you want an odd foot or a specialty foot that didn't come with the machine. That's nice. I like that. That's great. And it's the QVP line. So, okay, here is the long arm. That's exciting. The long arm is called the Miyabi. And we have this in several different options. It's available in a sit down model. It's available on a frame and it's available on a frame with robotics. So take it away, Tim. All right, great. So Miyabi means elegance. Well, how do you make a machine have elegance? Well, it's kind of hard to do, but the features are what give it its elegance because they make it easier to do your quilting, whether you're sitting at it or you're standing with a frame. Now, as you heard Barbara say, it's available in a sit down. It's the same machine. So if you bought it as a sit down and you decided later on you wanted to convert to a stand up, you don't have to worry about learning a whole new machine. You can buy a conversion kit to convert from a sit down to a frame. And the frame is available in five foot, seven foot, 10 foot or 12 foot lengths. So you can accommodate whatever size you have space available for in your room to set it up and you can grow. So you bought it as a seven foot and you move to a new house and you have a bigger space, you can add onto it to get that larger frame without too much problem. It is kind of a task to change it. So once you change it, you're gonna to wanna to leave it. But you know what? Let's talk about the elegance in our machine. The elegance really is the fact that it has a level of technology that is unmatched in other long arms. The Juki Miyabi is only 18 inch, 10 and a half inch high long arm that one has a fully automated or manual thread cutter. It cuts both the top and bottom thread. We also have an integrated- That's a big deal. That's yes, a big it deal. is. Thank That's you. a big deal. How many people pull it over, trim the threads, and then they have to go back and deal with those loose threads at the end of their quilt. This one will cut that in the middle so you don't have a small tail to deal with. You can actually have it do little stitches in place for you also. Oh, that's another little feature to help me because I'm lazy, remember? <laughs> but it really looks like a stitch lazy. regulator. The <laughs> stitch regulator is what's really going to make quilting easier and fun with the Miyabi. No moving parts, 
it's integrated into the machine. So it's not like I got a box of parts here and I got a machine here and I have to figure out how to put them all together. It comes in the machine. So how does it work? Well, I'm going to break this down into terms that are kind of easy for everybody to understand rather than giving you a whole bunch of math. I have two sensors that are built into the plate. Figure they're like the mouse at your computer. Got a light on the bottom of your mouse. If you ever turn it over and looked at it, don't look at it now. But if you ever turn over, there's a sensor light on the bottom of it. So I need to clean the bottom of my mouse. <laughs> Shame on you. Same, you, same, probably, same. you probably got hiccups moving your mouse across the screen then. You know what? That's also something we talk about when we're talking about our sensors on, on our long arm. Because anything that interferes with them will create an issue in your stitch control. If your fabric is too high, then it's not going to sense it. Just like you lift your mouse off the table. It doesn't read it very well. But we've got two mice on here. And that helps us give us better control to regulate the speed on our machine. So let me see if I can get this thing to turn on for us. See if we can't see two little red lights down here. Those two little red lights are now on. So my active sensors are running. If I had fabric or I had moved the machine, it would cause the machine to run. You know what? I don't want to cause myself a little thread knot, but I'm going to take the thread out and I'm going to show you just exactly how easy they are. See that? It senses the movement of my finger over that sensor. So you can imagine that same sense is going to be picking up on your fabric as you move the machine or as you move the fabric if you're on a sit down. That's a really cool feature. Now, we didn't have this before, so this is new in our Miyabi model. But you know what? I got used to it really quick because it is so sensitive. I didn't have to worry about making sloppy corners anymore. I knew I could come up and I could take a little one count at the corner and continue on and have a nice square corner when I'm doing manual. But remember, I'm lazy. I like to use the robotics a lot. So what do you think so far, Barb? I love it. So like we said, it's available in a sit down. So if you're a fabric pusher, you can still get that stitch regulation and thread trimming. And how big is the throat area on that? 18 inches deep. Okay. 10 and a half inches high. Got it. And we're okay. going to talk about our frame. Yeah, so that's a 10-foot frame, right? I have a 10-foot frame set up here. So in, in my studio at home, I have a 10-foot frame. I recently got this before I used to use another one, uh, also a Juki, but I just didn't own it. But, you know, it's time to graduate, have your own toys to play with. So I bought my own, added robotics to it. And I really like this frame because once I set it for my quilt, I don't have to go back and adjust the height of my bar in the rear here. I have an idler rail. And I have a collection rail. So my quilt is going to gather up here and I don't need to worry about lifting it off the bed of the machine as it gets bigger. So that's a nice feature on our frame to go with the electronics in our machine to make everything simple, easier to use, a little yeah. bit more elegant. So for some people who may not know what robotics is at all, think of it like, okay, so there's like a belt, an X and a Y belt that's attached to the machine. So that's the option if you get the machine and the frame and the robotics option, then comment Miyabi bundle for um, a special uh, mes message. I got some thread in my eye again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then, so it, it moves the machine for you. So for those of you who maybe are fabric pushers right now, you'll notice it gets a lot into your neck and uh, it can be a little, um, cumbersome to, you know, move the fabric. If you think of an analogy of a pen on a piece of paper, it's a lot easier to move the pen around on the paper, which is the sewing machine, the paper is the quilt, than to move the paper underneath the pen, if you can think of that analogy. So um, it's going to be a lot easier in the long run if you get yourself a frame and a long arm machine. Um, for that. And if you don't feel confident and maybe making perfect designs, or if you want to start, you know, doing a lot of this, get the robotics because the machine makes a perfect looking quilting top for you. And it's all programmable and everything like that. So it's, it's amazing. So and the robotics is Miyabi bundle. 
right? And the robotics is not just a matter of having the patterns that come with it. Like this little kitty cat pattern comes with it, but there's other patterns out there that you can buy. So you can go find other patterns to add to it. Our software comes with about 300 built-in patterns. And we have some other functions in our software, which are kind of unique to us as well. But one thing I really enjoy doing is being able to create my own on the fly. So I can actually go into record mode in my software and the machine will record my movement and play it back for me. So if I outlined a flower that's on the fabric and I want to repeat that over and over and over, they're all going to come out the same because I recorded it into the software. By the way, I love that. that and I can put all of the links to these as yeah, well in the sure. description of this video mm -hmm. um, for the Miyabi uh, bundle and the Miyabi. If you comment Miyabi, they're going to send you the link to the machine and the frame without robotics. So you would be moving the machine yourself. Right. You know, Barbara, how about if I make your bundle a little bit better? Did you, is that why you asked me if I am okay with surprises? Yes, that's why I asked you if you like surprises. <laughs> oh you know my goodness. I'm going to step out of the frame a second know, and I'll I be right him? back. <laughs> what do you mean you're going to make it better? Is it like Christmas? It's is like it my Christmas. birthday. <laughs> well, you, it's you going know, to be the, whoever purchases it birthday. <laughs> so what happens when you're lazy? You want all the bells and whistles. Well, for a long time in my quilting, I always had some issues with having to quilt around things. So I had to quilt around an applique or I had to quilt around an embroidery. Well, those days are over. When you get the new QCT5, you can get a gold access card. This is a annual card that you purchase. And this card unlocks additional features in the software for you. One of those features, which I find just amazing, is called, they call it Eclipse. I call it dig a hole because my background relates to leaving a blank space more with embroidery, but they call it Eclipse. And what you can do is you can then set an area on your quilt to have no stitches in it. So that's what I this is. So if that. they buy a bundle from you, okay. you email me, I will email them a code to get 90 days of free gold access. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It must be somebody, somebody's uh, <laughs> good luck day. Well, whoever purchases a good luck day. So Tim is throwing in the 90 day to the gold uh, access, which unleashes even more features of the robotics. Um, so with the robotics, just to explain it to you guys who may be not familiar, maybe you're doing your piecing and sending your quilt off to be um, quilt by check. Um, there's no reason why you, it, it works kind of like, like an embroidery machine in a way mm -hmm. where it's like you just set it and then it moves on its own. And then it does like the section that's on the frame. So cool. it's like these little belts are moving the machine right and left and, and you can just set everything on that screen. So it comes with the software. The screen is an additional purchase. So um, you can use any, like, can you use it on an iPad or does it need to be a Microsoft? It's only on Windows right now. Windows, okay. Right. So any Windows-based tablet you can use. Um, to operate that. So, oh so, my gosh. I'm Thank gonna you, a, Tim. Sure, I'm gonna see if I can do a quick little run here for you so they okay. can see what it's gonna look like. So Great. if I was to set my pattern and want it to move, I would come into my screen and I would have set my parameters and I would tell it to sew. But sometimes you wanna check where that pattern is going to go and so we have a trace feature. So you can see on the screen, it's going to trace out to show me exactly how that pattern is going to sew out. Can everybody see that okay? Um, the screen is a little bit hard to see what's on the screen, but we understand what you're saying, right? If anybody has any questions, just let me know. So that's a nice thing with the trace feature is you can see how the pattern is going to run before you run it on the screen. You can also have the machine trace it on your quilt as well. So you actually have two options of tracing, one on the screen and one actually moving the machine. 
Now, what happens when I have a problem and I use the robotics? There is a repair system in it. So you don't have to worry if I broke a thread or if I ran out of bobbin thread, there's a way to go back and invisibly match that pattern again and tell it to repair and continue on. So it actually makes it easier. So you're thinking about, oh, robotics. It does make everything easier and your patterns are gonna come out to be uniform and you're not stuck, stuck with one size of that pattern. You know, when you buy a stencil, you're stuck with whatever size that stencil comes with, right, Barbara? Yeah. Barbara, but in the software, we can resize on the fly. So if I want to make my little kitty cat only five inches tall, I can make him five inches tall. I can make him 12 inches tall if I want. So I'm not stuck with a particular size. I can adjust it in the software and then let the software recalculate it and sew the pattern for me. Love it. Oh my goodness. So we have lights. We have a sensor system for our stitch regulator that's integrated. We have thread cutter. I mean, what else could we want in our machine to get us started? How about modes? Because we may not all use the robotics, but I want some modes. So let me see if I can't move the camera to get a better picture of our screen here. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Y'all ready to do musical chairs again? <laughs> Don't kill me. Okay, Renee, that one is called the Miyabi. You may be familiar with, if you've looked at Juki Longarms in the past, um, the TL2200 QVP was the model before this one. Um, this one's the Miyabi and it has thread trimmers and the integrated uh, stitch regulator through the lasers through the bottom, which he explained is like, like using a mouse. So that's like a big, big deal. All right. Oh, and hey, Bruce. Renee Bolton says you're amazing, and I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Barb, are you ready? Yep. All right. This little button here gives me those options when I'm doing manual quilting, when I'm actually running and moving the machine myself. I have a based mode. If you have friends that like to do their own hand quilting, but they don't like to pin, they can actually bring you the quilt you could set on the base mode and you could actually use the stitch regulation system to base the quilt for them to make it easier for them to handle to do their hand quilting. Well, that's kind of interesting. So we actually can help our friends do their quilting. But sometimes you just want to do it the old fashioned way. You just want to do everything manual, no stitch regulation whatsoever. This is where you and the machine get to become one because you are going to set the machine at a speed and you're going to turn it on and you're going to match the speed with your movement. This is true art form quilting in my book. People that have the availability or the, the option to do this and have that unique talent to do it, I admire them a lot because that's something I'm not very good at. Yeah, I, I think people I that started quilting before uh, stitch regulation was available. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? People that can do that, that's great and I admire them because that is truly an art form. I can draw images and I can do some quilting, but without the stitch regulator, you know what? My stitches aren't quite so even. I have a tendency to speed up and slow down because I'm like rushing through this part of the pattern because I know this part. Oh, this part's easy. So we get comfortable with certain portions and we rush through them. But people that have better control than I do can run in manual mode and create beautiful works of art. Now, that doesn't mean you can't learn it because there's always that art form. There's always a need to improve your own abilities or to improve on your abilities. And manual mode gives you that, that possibility. I have cruise mode. Now cruise for me is like the really lazy mode because the needle keeps running even as I stop, but it is stitch regulated. So as I move the machine faster, the machine is gonna speed up to keep the stitch length even. And that stitch length is displayed over here and I can adjust it. So if I want 10 stitches per inch, I can make it 10 stitches per inch. Let's say I'm doing tighter patterns, tight little corners, tight little curves. I want more stitches because if I don't have enough stitches, those tight little curves are gonna look like little stop signs. 
And then of course I have precise mode. Precise mode is the mode that I generally operate in when I'm doing demonstrations because it's stitch regulated. When I stop, it stops. So those are our four modes that are built in the machine before you even talk about doing robotics or anything else. So you have plenty of options to play with in the machine. Yeah, for those of you who currently own a long arm and have stitch regulation on it, tell us which mode you use. I use the one, and I can't remember the name, when you move, it moves. Precise. You stop, it stops. That's the one that I do. That's I like that mode. <laughs> so, yeah, just let us know uh, which one you, you think or which one you prefer. So, yeah, I love it. We can switch back to the camera. So Barbara, I'm going to talk about one more feature because this one is one of those things that I find a lot of people do not actually pay too much attention to, and that is bobbins in your long arm. Our bobbin winder is right up here on the top. It's not at the back of the machine. It's not a separate box. Ooh, I said machine. I'm so sorry. It's not at the back of my toy. It's in the middle. I can actually easily reach it. Now I'm going to tell you a little story. Long time ago, about 10 years ago, when I first started quilting, I learned to quilt on a 26 inch stroke machine. That was the first machine I learned on. You know, Barbara, nothing like jumping in with both your feet, right? I mean, just whoop, right into the deep end. <laughs> but that, then you learn, you're like, oh my gosh, I can only <laughs> do this much of my quilt at one time. And then I have to roll it and do more. Exactly. Yeah. I can't reach the whole 26 inches anyway. And you know, that machine, the bobbin winder was at the back. So I had to stop what I was doing, walk around to the back of the machine just to wind a bobbin. Remember, I'm lazy, and I didn't always think about winding two or three or four bobbins ahead of time. Tim, now, you're the least lazy person I know. You just <laughs> like the features that get you to where, <laughs> to where you need to be uh, quickly. So I don't think you're lazy at all. So our, <laughs> you're so smart. Our bobbin winders, so our bobbin winders in the middle, nice and convenient for us lazy people, because I don't like to walk around to the back of the machine. I do everything from up front so I can see what I'm working on and see my stitching. Because sometimes you get unexpected results and you might need to make a change in midstream. Also, I'm gonna give you a little hint about quilting. Don't be afraid to try something you haven't tried before with your long arm machine, or even at your home machine if you're doing free motion work. And I'm not a purist. I hear people today all the time that they only quilt with cotton thread. Barbara, I quilt with whatever thread I want to create the effect that I'm wanting on that particular quilt or project. So it means I'll quilt with cotton, rayon, nylon, invisible, whatever thread is gonna give me the results I'm looking for, that's what I'm going to quilt with. So Barbara, any questions about our machines today? Oh, uh, we've uh, just had some comments. Um, a lot of people are typing. Um, so just to recap the, um, the messages, if you're on Facebook or if you're watching on YouTube or on our um, All Brands page, um, you can type in the comment Haruka for the first machine that he showed. I have the Kyrie. He has the Sayaka. That's the sewing machine with the interchangeable um, uh, needle plates, and it comes with that extra attachment to use the multiple feet. Um, Miyabi, that's the long arm. That's um, the machine and the 10 foot frame. Uh, and the Miyabi bundle is the machine, 10 foot frame and robotics. And guess what? What? We have 60 months, 0% financing on all these machines and it's available through checkout on our website on approved credit through synchrony financing. Um, the only one that doesn't have uh, the 60 months is the entry level Haruka. Uh, but the Kyrie, the Sayaka, and the Miyabi all have 60 months. 0% financing and free shipping. That, if you do some quick math, you know what that makes? That makes that Sayaka like $55 a month or less. That's pretty good deal for a top-of-the-line machine, don't you think? I would say so. So, <laughs> you know, I showed you a surprise earlier. I've got a couple more for you. You ready? Um, are y'all ready? Because, uh, okay, so you're you're throwing in the um, 
what is it called? It's like the, the activation, 90 day activation card. It's a gold? Gold access card. Okay. For features, okay. additional features with the robotics. Correct. So if they order the entire bundle from you, you send me their email. I will email them a code that will get them 90 days of free access to the gold access. And it's not just the Eclipse. There are several other features in there, corners and borders and things like that, that will expand the operational use of their robotic system, the QCT5. Eclipse is only available in QCT5. Oh, I forgot to tell you a little secret. Upgrades on Quilter's Creative Touch are free. So if you've got an older version, QCT4, you can upgrade to five. There's no charge for that. Oh, okay. If so you, now you, can that, if you buy the machine? If you buy the machine and you happen to get a, 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 a software bundle that has Quilt version four in it, you can upgrade to five at no charge. Oh, wow. I know. How many pieces of software the don't charge? I'm sorry? And that's if they purchase the Miyabi? Actually, all of our software is free upgrade, but this gold access is only if they purchase the Miyabi through you, we'll say for a week. We'll give them a few days to think about it. Okay. Don't, don't take too long. <laughs> oh my gosh, when did we say the, the specials were gonna expire? I forgot, hold on. Um, and we still have to do the giveaway, so don't let me forget. Oh my okay. gosh. Let's see. Um, what was the ending date? For the specials? I yeah. I don't remember them. Okay, let's just say two weeks. Okay, that'll work. I'll, I'll extend the, the, the free access for two weeks also. Okay, great. That is uh, August the 14th. So if you, um, if you want to take advantage of those offers, just let us know. And hey, I wanted to tell y'all about my surging because um, somebody was asking, how do you search, how do you quilt on a serger? And you are the one that put the bug in my ear about that. <laughs> yeah, Jill, <laughs> happy birthday, happy early birthday. So, um, oh my gosh, Mary Lou. So tell me if I did this right, because I got my M O 1000 back here. And so I just, I, I had a panel like this, which these are so cute, by the way, you like buy it and it's already printed in like little squares. But I was like, what if I make this on a bag and I'm going to be doing a lot of washing and I don't want the seams to open up, you know, I'm going to totally surge it instead because that's a more secure stitch than just a straight stitch. So I basically, I just did, I surged this panel and then I pressed it one way like to the left mm -hmm. with my awesome iron that I love and then I did this next panel and then I press it all to the right so that whenever I um and y'all please don't make fun of, I'm not perfect <laughs> <laughs> this is like totally it looks off but in the front it's actually not too bad that's not too bad of a point right um, maybe it just looks funny because the way it's pressed, but it's like pressing it really helped me to not have a big uh, bump in there. And you had a good suggestion on that too, right? To maybe not do a quarter of an inch so it's a little less bulky, right? Correct. Correct. We, we normally think that we're always closing with a quarter of an inch, but on a serger, you're going to trim off that extra piece of fabric. So why not trim it a little smaller and have less bulk in the seam? Yeah. Hey, I'm going to move my camera for a second. I'll be right back. So while she's moving her camera around, you know what? I'm going to give you a little show and tell because she probably needs a couple extra minutes. And she asked me to do one. And I said, well, I'll have to see what I can drag out. So I thought maybe I'd drag out some of my quilts to show you. And I'm going to start with the first quilt I made. Now, before I pull this out and show it to you, how many of you still have the first quilt that you made? So let's take a look at mine. And it's kind of scrappy, but it's planned scrappy, which means I went out and bought the fabric specifically 
for this quilt. So bear with me as we move the silent, as we move the camera, and I'm going to open up the quilt for you. Tim, gorgeous. How long yeah. have you been quilting? Oh, about ten or twelve years. So this was the first quilt I did. I saw this pattern. Can't remember who the pattern is. I want to say it's from Blue Fig. That doesn't sound right. Blue something. Anyway, I think it's called Jelly Bean. And I loved the pattern. And it was fun and energetic. And I said, I have to have fabrics to go with it. Well, I had a cutter, cutting system. And so I sat there and I cut the strips from the fabric I bought. Because I bought bulk fabric. I cut enough strips to do two of these quilts. So I had fabric left over. But you know what? I'm lazy and I like fun things. And the back fabric is another fun fabric. It's got movement, it's got bubbles, it's got a little pattern to it. So don't forget about the back of your quilt when you're putting one together. So this is what kind of got me started with quilting. By the way, just because you spend a lot of time on a quilt doesn't mean it's any less value than spending a short time on a quilt. And I say that because I was challenged to do a quilt. And I wanted to do just a simple quilt, relatively small. So I did. This That's really awesome, cool. Tim. I'm loving this. A real simple, easy quilt. Three nights, about two and a half hours each night. This Dude is that quilt is gorgeous. And I agree. Pretty? You know, so it's just fun playing with the fabrics and having a good time with the, with your toys to play with. Now, I'm going to tell you, all of these quilts that I'm showing you were sewn on a juki. Unfortunately, they weren't all quilted on a juki. The long arms weren't, the long arm from juki, the Miyabi, and the 2200 were not available back then. Too bad. I could have had a good time doing the quilting on that also. So this next quilt I'm going to show you, I didn't actually make the quilt. So I did the quilting on it. I want to show you the back because the back is really highlighting the quilting. Can you see all the snowflakes? Can you walk a little bit more towards the camera? Is that better? Oh, yeah. Oh, so, so that's not a print. That, that flower is actually quilted. That's a snowflake, and they, that's the quilt pattern. The fabric is actually just white. So that was done on robotics or freehand? Oh, this was done on robotics. I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. So now I'll show you the front of the quilt, because I want people to be challenged. I want you to challenge yourself when you're doing quilts. So you can see the quilt. This is a pattern that we've used several times. But the piece that I want you to pay attention to are the little squares. We've done this quilt probably five times, and every time in those squares, we've kind of used a different fabric. This one has a shiny cotton metallic fabric in it, so it has a little bit of a shine to it. But we did another pattern, I mean another quilt with the same pattern, but we used silk in the squares. So don't be afraid to try other fabrics and things, mixing them in with your quilt. You'll be surprised at what effects you're going to get. So there's your quick show and tell for you, Barbara. I love it. Hey, guess what I'm doing? Are you who giving away something? See, who wants to see the air threading on the new uh, oh. MO1000? Well, not new, but the awesome MO1000. So um, I love this serger. It's great for so many different purposes purposes but you can also quilt with this so i went ahead and i cut out some squares but let me just show you how easy it is for those of you who are afraid to thread your serger be afraid no more so all you have to do is leave a little loop there can you see that or do i need to get closer how about i get full screen for just a moment sure Okay, let me know if y'all can see that. Um, and Carrie Cunningham has the serger as well. So I know she loves it too. Okay, so all you have to do is engage this. Turn your hand wheel until it clicks towards you. 
and then press, make sure it's not snagged on anything. Press this button and y'all check it out. Upper looper, lower looper, threaded. No squinting. I didn't, the only thing time I had to use these was just to put the thread in the hole to get it threaded. So it's that easy. And then when I'm done, I just disengage that um, and close it and put my thread tray on. And Tim, <laughs> did I do a good job? You're a pro. Okay, let me um, show you just how easy it is. I'll just back up real quick. And um, on this air threading serger, which I think this is the future the air threading because it just, you know, like a lot less room for error. So I went ahead and I cut out my kitty cats. If y'all can see that, I'm just gonna put them face forward. Now, do you put your your blade down, Tim? No, I have my blade up because I like to use it as the edge guide. That's exactly what I was doing too. So I'm just gonna put my fabric up to like where my needles are going to start, put my foot down and I'm just going to ride it around the edge. And, you know, I did a sample uh, stitch and then I measured it on my cutting board to make sure it was an exact quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to go right along the edge and yeah, and it's just that easy. So I'm going to put you back up. And I'm going to switch my camera back and then we're going to do a giveaway. Oh, that sounds great. You know, Barbara, with your serger, when you're doing your quilt, if you didn't cut your squares or maybe somebody else cut the squares, that's why you want to have that blade up so you can trim off those extra little furry hair edges that might be there. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So as promised, we're going to do a $50 gift certificate giveaway to a watcher. So if you love what you saw or you just want to say, hey, oh my gosh, holy cow, Jill, I love you. You're so funny. Um, Am I eligible? <laughs> Kathy, if uh, you want to know the robotics cost, go ahead and um, type Miyabi bundle and they'll send you the two links. And uh, if you want robotics just by itself, then um, that will be one of the links in there. Um, yes, Kathy. This is an amazing uh, <laughs> air thread serger, which is so cool. It's the future. I don't think sergers are going to be manually threading anymore. Uh, so anyway, so we're what are we giving away today? We're giving away a $50 all brands gift certificate that you can use either towards the purchase of a new Juki machine or whatever you like. Um, so give me some shout outs. I'll wait for just a moment. Uh, for it to generate some some comments. <laughs> and I'm gonna close my eyes and pick a random. Tammy Brown, congratulations. Um, e uh, direct message, all brands, your email address, address and phone number. And we will send you that coupon code to use on our website towards a future purchase. Great, congratulations, right. Tammy. <laughs> yeah. So we're having a lot of questions. Uh, what's the price of things? So we can't quote the price, but if you do comment or email marketing at allbrands.com, uh, the first machine was the Haruka. Uh, if you want just all the links and information, just type all, A-L-L, -L, and we'll um, direct message you that. Uh, Kyrie, that's the one that I have, and it's awesome. It's a great machine, sewing machine. And then Sayaka is the QVP line that you have mm -hmm. with the ex few extra features. Correct. Miyabi is that beautiful long arm in the background with stitch regulation and thread trimming, 19 inch throat. And that comes with a 10 foot frame. And if you want 10 foot frame, long arm, and robotics with the gold card that you're gonna throw in. Yep. And um, yeah, that's great. Just type Miyabi bundle and we'll send you that. If you want it all, just type all. 
just email us all or type all in the comments and we will um, send you that message. Nancy, I wasn't planning on doing the surger in today's video. So <laughs> let me direct message you later um, on that. Um, so yeah, I hope that this was informative to everyone. And um, yes, congratulations, Tammy, for winning. And yeah. So Tim, how long have you been quilting? Oh, well, I've been quilting about 12, maybe 10 to 12 years. I actually started sewing when I was about eight or nine. That's when my grandmother taught me how to use a sewing machine. So you can imagine eight or nine, and now I'm, mm, that's a little bit of technology change in there to, to kind of learn, but they're toys to me. You know, like I said earlier, sewing machine, machine sounds like work. Work has a bad connotation. It's a four letter word. We want to have a good time. So my toys are my toys and, and, you know, going from one toy to the next, it just makes it easy. If you stay within a product line like Juki, then you know when you go from one machine to the new model or to another model, the functionality is going to remain relatively the same. So you lessen your learning curve on it, which means more time to enjoy it. Yeah. And I like how it's straight to the point, great machine. Um, and they really, it's very well thought out. So Carrie's watching, and I know she has an MO1000 and an F300. Um, I think it's the F300. Um, <laughs> so tell us what you think, Carrie. And Bruce learned on a treadle machine. Kathy loved the information. Thank you so much for watching everyone. And oh, thank, you. thank you, Renee. And thank you, Tammy, and everyone who joined us today. You're like our All Brands family. And Tim, welcome to the family <laughs> on the All Brands show. <laughs> so we hope that you guys have a excellent, excellent day. Uh, just please email us at marketing at allbrands.com if you have any interest, and we'll answer any questions that you might have, or just message us in the uh, Facebook comments below. There's also links in the description of this video. So. I hope we opened a whole new world of uh, juky quilting to everyone today. All right. Well, thanks for the invite, Barb. I enjoyed yes. it. Yes. I hope you come back and join us. Oh, wait. You are coming back to Shh. join us. That's a secret. <laughs> Can we tell? Oh, you know, yeah. All right. Okay. Can, you, can if, you see behind me on the quilt? Let me uh, go back. Move the machine a second here. Can you see the fish on the white fabric? Yeah, whenever I hop out, I can see it. Okay, great. Thank you to your niece to doing the camera work. We really appreciate that. Um, so that was on that's on the another machine that's a uh -huh. Japanese name that we haven't talked about, and it's a collaboration with Juki and Tajima, and it's actually yeah. an embroidery machine. Correct. And this is what it looks like. It's called the Tajima Sai machine. And how many needles is on it? Eight needles. Eight needles. It and comes it is with a cap equipment too. Oh but yes. Uh -huh. It's a compact commercial quality embroidery machine. And we actually refer to it more as, as a system because it's not just the machine. It also includes Tajima Writer Plus software, which allows you to embellish and create your own embroidery patterns. Yeah. So, so Tajima is, are they the largest manufacturer of embroidery machines in the world? Uh, they are the number one embroidery machine manufacturing. They have the highest level of quality. They're a right match for Juki as far as the quality of the machines and the products that they provide. This particular machine they introduced not too long ago, but it's a single head machine and the market is different for multi head than it is for single head. And so you need to kind of team up with somebody that can give you better exposure. I fell in love with this machine the first time I sat down and used it because it was just simple, easy to use. You could grasp it quickly, even with the multi needles. And I hadn't really played with multi needle machines before, but it was a lot of fun. And so, of course, I have one in my sewing studio. You can't see it because it's behind all the mess. I'm not gonna <laughs> see the mess. Wait, <laughs> your sewing room's not clean all the time, Tim? No, you kidding? <laughs> what you what got to see today is the clean side of it. 
the dirty just, side is all behind the camera where I moved everything that was on the floor. <laughs> that's what we do. We just shove everything to the side so that nobody knows that we actually also have messes in our sewing room. But right. that's just because we're creative, right? Yeah, and that's, that's okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so excited to have you back in September talking about the Tajima machine and we'll definitely let y'all know about that, but it is currently available on our website. Um, so that is the Juki Tajima Sai machine. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank right. y'all so much for joining us and thank you, Tim. I can't see you. I think you're out of the camera shot. There you are. <laughs> I want to thank you again. Thank and you. I enjoyed it. And thank your niece. Give her a big hug uh, from straight from all brands and everyone that was watching. And have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.